Traders. I'm John Dan from Mazda, and you're watching Speed Source TV. everybody, welcome to Speed Source TV. I'm Jeff Siegel, driver of the 69 FXDD Mazda RX-8. Um, today, we're gonna do a little spot for you on the inner workings of the car, show you the cockpit, some of the tools that we have inside the car to help adjust the car and drive the car when we're out there, and just uh, give you a tour around the inside of, uh, of this cool little car. So here we are inside the car. Obviously, there's quite a bit going on inside the car. Plenty of stuff to get distracted by and uh, to help us out while we're driving. Um, Start looking ahead in your field of vision. Obviously, we've got the dashboard that gives us all of our displays of what's going on with the car from temperatures to all the relevant statistics. There's a pretty cool tool on the dash that a lot of the drivers use, uh, a predictive lap timer that shows us at every point on the track what our lap time is predicted to be. So we have a good idea of whether it's a good lap or a bad lap, whether we're gaining time or losing time. Above the dashboard, we've got the shift lights. Um, in this car, it's not like a street car. We don't really look at the tachometer. We definitely don't look at the speedometer. We just look at the shift lights. When they light up, I know that it's time to grab the next gear and keep going. That also serves as our warning lights right there. If we get a red light on there, it could be anything from overheating or low oil pressure or any number of other issues with the car. And we see a red light and we know that we've got to pay attention to our gauges and check out what's going on. Moving down from the dashboard, obviously looking at the steering wheel, it's uh, a bit complicated looking, but really not all that much different from a street car. Street cars have a lot of controls on the steering wheel and the race car is no different. Um, the first button you see, the yellow button, is the radio button. We push that button so that we can communicate with the pits while we're out on the track and talk about what's going on in the race, what the car is doing, any changes we want to make and so forth. Moving down, we've got a toggle switch right here that scrolls through the pages of the MoTeC display so I can see all the different statistics on the car, all the temperatures, all the pressures, anything I need to know about the car, I can scroll through with this switch. This blue switch right here, we have labeled as push to pass. Our competitors don't really like that button. Um, in fact, that's just kind of our joke to play with people. It used to be a drink bottle button. We no longer use it. If you're going down the back straight at Daytona, Daytona and you really want to get close to somebody and you know, feel like you're doing something extra to get by them, give it a push. It never does really anything, unfortunately. Moving to the right, we've got a track map in the middle of the steering wheel. Um, fortunately, I've been doing this for a long enough time that I actually know which way the road goes. Um, Really the point of this is we've got the numbers on the track so that when I come into the pits and talk to the crew about the track, we know exactly which corner is which. I can look and say turn one and they look at their map and it corresponds and we know we're on the same page. Moving to the right, we've got the pit speed button. We come in the pit speed, pit speed is 45 miles an hour. So rather than having to look at the speedometer and hold that speed and risk going over and getting penalized during the race, we have a pit speed button. It serves a bit like cruise control. Once we push that, you can push the gas pedal as hard as you want and the car will never exceed 45 miles an hour. Moving down, we've got another toggle switch. Moving it up, we'll reset the fuel and acknowledge any errors on the dash. Like I said about the shift lights and the error lights, if those come on, I hit that button up to acknowledge that I've seen the alarm and it turns the alarm off. Moving it down is the mode button. It scrolls through a couple different modes of the MoTeC, moving from practice pages that have lots more information to race pages, which are just really the more relevant information, warm up pages so that the mechanics can see really some detailed stuff when they're warming up the car in the morning. Last button on the steering wheel is the wiper button. Um, it's actually a pretty cool little button that we used quite a bit this weekend. Um, it just is a momentary button that moves the wipers only for as long as we have it. So if I just need a quick, brush and off. I don't have to reach down and look for the wiper switch on the dash. I just give that a push and as long as I hold it, they move back and forth. Right here to the left of the steering wheel, we've got our sway bar controls from inside the cockpit. This is a really useful tool that lets us adjust the balance of the car while we're out on the track so we don't have to come into the pits and have the mechanics work on the car. We've got a front sway bar or anti-roll bar and a rear anti-roll bar. And as you can see right here, it shows you that moving the bars forward and I can take them and move them all the way forward or through several adjustments all the way through the range it goes from full stiff to full soft and moving both bars lets me adjust the car for the conditions on the track and also as we burn fuel out of the car it changes the balance of the car and we can use our bars to keep a good balance and keep the speed consistent and keep the tire wear consistent.